Welcome back once again everyone, I'm Kepalese Games and this is EVE Online, I'm in my Varger, let's do a level 4 mission. And the level 4 mission we're going to be experiencing today is Vengeance. This is a decent one, it's pretty good. It's against Serpentis, so they're going to be fighting Kinetic and Thermal at us, and we're better off fighting Kinetic at them, or Thermal. Luckily for us, Phase Plasma does both those things. It is two systems over, so there is going to be some travel time involved in this one. We're being paid just over 1.5 million ISK for completing the mission, with another 1.1 million or so, if we do it within 6 hours. 6 hours tells you that the game thinks it's quite a long mission. And we're getting just under 7,000 loyalty points, so let's accept and go. Orb drive active. Okay, we're in the mission. There are a lot of enemies here. This group has aggressed, this group down below us has not, this group over here. There's essentially three groups. These two groups look like they're separate, but they're really not. Let's just get rid of these annoying destroyers, shall we? Let's just wipe them out first. Then we'll take the battle cruisers. Everything's at point blank range, so this is most definitely a short range mission. I think we'll do this group, which is below us, next. Hey look, it's our old friend, placeholder asteroid replacement. Anytime you see this exact model here, it is because it is replacing what used to be a mineable asteroid in a mission. And these used to be um, Veldspar and Scordite, I believe, in this particular mission. And when the developers decided that you shouldn't really be mining in missions, they removed all the mineable ores and they replaced them with this single model, this sharded rock. And because they're very lazy and couldn't be arsed, you will notice that all these sharded rocks are the same size and in the same orientation and they look really, really bloody amateurish. I mean, they couldn't even be bothered. I mean, yeah, use the same model, but for God's sake, change the size of it and the rotation of it. You do have X, Y and Z axis available. I mean, look how crap this looks with the same model all pointing the same way, being the same size. I will complain about that every time I see it, in every single video, until they change it. In the meantime, I'm just going to one-shot pretty much everything in this mission, because everything is really close. And when you're using autocannons, that's where you want everything to be. Because your optimal range is 4,000 meters. Not that you want to be shooting things at 4,000 meters, because tracking speed is a thing. Anything too close will be under your guns, and it will be inside the range at which your guns can comfortably track things. But we seem to have destroyed everything pretty much already. I'm just going to drop a bookmark right on my ship, because we know that everything's pretty much within... 20 kilometers anyway. There's no point to, no point bookmarking a wreck. No point at all. Just a few more enemies left, and no reinforcement spawns in this room. Hey, just the two battleships. This will not take long. I'm just going to deal with Bastion being off for quite some time. We'll just have to grind this guy down slowly. I didn't want to wait another 30 seconds for Bastion to cycle all the way around. He would die long before that happened. Turn the shield off just to let the cap recharge. There he goes. Orb drive active. If I had not turned Bastion off, I'd have to turn it off now and then wait 30 seconds and then take the gate. I have not got time to hang around, I've got things to do, I am a busy man. And away we go into room 2. I believe there's three rooms in this mission. They're all fairly similar, everything's right up in your face. Right, this one can be a little bit annoying. What I'm going to do is double click directly behind myself and turn on the micro watt drive to pull range away from all these elite frigates. Which hasn't worked because they webbed me. Okay, let's not do that. 
Okay, this might go wrong. Do you will notice these things are far too close for me to shoot with my guns. So we're going to have to try and kill them with our drones. The problem is, is that these are elite frigates. And as soon as we put the drones out, they're probably all going to drop aggro on me and start aggro on the drones, which is a very bad thing because they will absolutely annihilate our drones. This little one is being annoying. He has not red boxed us, and I wish he would. Okay, let's put the drones out. Get them to work on the closest ones first. You'll notice that all these frigates will go yellow because they'll change aggression to our drones. Luckily, the drones are right outside. They're only a thousand meters away, so they will instantly be recalled. All right, the frigates did not change aggression to our drones. They might still do that. They're supposed to do that because they're elite frigates. And their AI is supposed to hate drones. But so far, so good. And we are absolutely demolishing the battleships. I'm only kind of keeping half an eye on what my guns are doing. I'm more worried about my drones. Because you can get yourself into a death spiral in this position we're in. If these frigates kill all your drones, then you're going to have to try and kill them with your guns. And as we saw, if they web you, you can't pull range. So you can't hit them with your guns. So you end up being stuck in this mission forever and having to ask someone to come and help you. I found that happened to me in this mission back in the olden days before I had a marauder that one-shotted everything but for some reason um, the enemy frigates have decided not to be elite frigates today they have not changed aggression to my drones at all which is not how they're supposed to work but you know what, if the game wants to break that's fine by me Drones have actually killed everything. Let's bring them back. No point drones killing a battleship. I'm just going to deactivate Bastion now. It's only about a third of the way through its cycle. That guy will probably die before the cycle ends. Hey, it's our old friend, Mr. Placeholder Asteroid Rock. And it looks like... It actually looks like one of them is in a slightly different orientation. Wow, look at that. All the rest of them are, are exactly the same size and the same orientation. Anyway, um, whilst I was saying that, Rune 2 is being cleared. Let's get into Rune 3, shall we? Warp drive active. No reinforcement wave. Everything died very, very quickly. I did remember to drop a bookmark, which is good. That entire room took about two minutes. Okay, third and final room. We have lots of battle cruisers right up in our face. So we'll just draw a box around them immediately. Pop Bastion. We have another group at medium range. And we have a lot of stuff in the back. I do believe that when you aggress this medium range group, all the stuff at the back will also aggress. That is absolutely fine by me. That's what we want. So the things at the back will be on approach. Just try and get rid of the frigates first, I think. And then we'll work in the cruisers. And I'm going to bookmark one of the frigate wrecks. Just like so. Yes, good. Everything at the back has aggressed along with the medium range group. This is great. Just going to put all four guns on cruisers so I can't be bothered to split fire anymore and I want all the stuff at the back to have time to approach me one more cruiser from the medium range group and then the two battleships just the two battleships now and then we'll switch over to the optimal range script and hammer everything from where we are I can't be bothered to move So yeah, this is apparently a six-hour mission. 
I love the um, time bonus rewards. They're so laughable in 2023. I mean, missions have essentially not been touched in, well, since I've been playing EVE, what, 15 years ago? I mean, when level 4 missions were invented, the, um, the developers never intended them to be run solo. They were intended to be fleet. They were intended to be really hard, which is why this mission gives you six hours to get the time bonus. So yeah, even back then, um, players played the game in ways that the developers had never intended, and the power creep was real. Every single patch made the player's ships more and more powerful, and missions were never updated to reflect that. Which is why we've almost completed this six hour long mission in 14 minutes and we're in third We're blazing away through the third room and we've been going for 14 minutes. I mean, just look at that. That was just absolutely insane. Right, two battleships left. I'm not going to bother to shoot at the gun turrets. They're not shooting at me. They're only worth 40,000 isk. I don't care. Just turn my tank off for a little while. Just because the capacitor's a little bit... Looking a little bit orange instead of yellow. Okay, one thing remaining, it's the boss. He's worth two and a half million isk. He has a pretty high resistances, but we're a marauder, so we're just going to absolutely demolish him. And I think I'm going to turn Bastion off. It's got seven seconds left to run. We'll see whether or not he survives those seven seconds. I think he is, just about. Exactly the same. Okay, we need to go back. And I shall bring the Noctis. Drive active. So yeah, if they want to make missions challenging again, they should um, change the time bonuses. Six hours for that is laughable. We've just done it in 20 minutes. All right, some time has passed. I have been out and looted and sandwiched with the Noctis. The bounty prize payment has hit the wallet. Unlike the last video in which I made a mistake and edited and counted up too soon. As we see here, when we mouse over, the name of the boss has appeared and we know he was the last thing we killed in the mission. So we know this is actually all the mission bounty. So that's 11 and a half million isk in bounty. Another 2.6 in time bonus reward and agent pay and a huge 25.9 million isk in loot and salvage of which 14.9 is worth keeping and selling. We got a two of these pitfall compact warp disruption fuel generators worth 4.7 each which is lovely. We did actually get some tags in this mission they're only worth just over 2,000 isk each so they're absolute garbage. And again we got 8.5 million in salvage. So that is not too bad a haul for that mission. Plus, of course, just under 7,000 loyalty points. Not too bad. Anyway, I hope to see you again for the next level 4 mission, whichever that happens to be, and I hope you look after yourself until then. See you later, everyone.